Texas is the second largest state in the Union, second largest economy in the Union, and the second biggest population of the Union. But the state ma never had been in American hands, as the state was originally Spanish. Origins of Americans in Spanish. Texas, they back to the Napoleonic Wars and the Louisiana Purchase. Our story begins with the colonization of America. Basically, France owned most of eastern Canada and the entire Midwest. Also owned some of Texas, but instantly failed and was in the Texas was colonized by Spain. But this was technically still French, which meant there was some disputed territory. But no one cared because even though Texas was great, there was a lot of other great places that won't kill you. Maybe. Anyway, the Seven Years' War comes and goes, and though it's a great story to talk about, I'm talking about the Texan Revolution, and we're in the Seven Years' War, so, yeah. Anyway, after the war, all of France's territory was lost except for two islands that I made a video about. It was one of my first videos, can you please watch it after this? Anyway, the Louisiana Territory was given to Spain, even though Spain was on the side of the French. Maybe because the British wanted to have an ally instead of a bloody pulp like Prussia to Austria after the Austro-Prussian War. But if they did want that, they failed. As Spain was in the American Revolution on America's side. After the war, the Napoleonic Wars began and Spain had to reconsider if they should keep holding this territory as it was originally French and should be given back to the French. Also, I would like to say that the man with the gun would like Catalonia, which will help it fight for independence in the modern day as even declaring independence for exactly eight seconds. Anyway, Louisiana Territory was French, but Napoleon wanted to invade Britain across the English cha Channel, but the Brits had amassed a large navy, so Napoleon needed cash. And fast. La 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 la. Oh, what's this, soldier? Oh, that's French sit. Haiti, ain't it great? Well, oh, poop. So, Napoleon's Haiti begins the Haiti Haitian Revolution, and the so-and-so thousands of troops that were supposed to head to defend French North America, oh yeah, a new name, ended up in Haiti. During this, French North America was undefended. Now, you may think that America is now about to try to invade French North America as the country who had just lived for 40 years. But remember this, Napoleon and the French Empire did not control all of this territory with settlers and troops. France controlled New Orleans and some small forts and towns on the Mississippi and Missouri rivers, respectively. Take control of the said forts and towns, send the navy to New Orleans, and what's Napoleon going to do about it? His troops were massacred in Haiti. While France still needed cash, America began to have the idea of manifest destiny, and there was huge lands out in Oregon and Texas that the French controlled? Wars were confusing back then, and no one knew who controlled who. Anyway, America finally took control of French North America after buying it for $15 million. America got Louisiana and France got, well, money. France never invaded Britain, but the money was useful. Anyway, Americans flocked west, but no one, no one knew where to stop. Some saw it went to all the way to the Rio Grande River, giving Texas to the Americans. But soon America would turn their attention to the War of 1812, leading to settlers to going back to America for protection. And deserters from militias in the army to head to Texas. This began the Green Flag Revolt that was crushed by Spain. But after the war, Mexico began to revolt against the Spanish government. And with more Americas coming, Spain needed a clear border. Meanwhile, in Spanish West Florida, the people revolted and created their own country, which would later be annexed by the Americans. Oh yeah, I have a video on that as well. Since Spain had almost everything to lose, and nothing to gain, Spain offered Florida in exchange for Texas. 
You might ask yourself why would America accept Florida instead of Texas, which has more resources and land? Well, because Old Hickory, hero of New Orleans, had just begun a campaign in the Florida for absolutely no reason, and Jackson was very hopeful that the U.S. would own it someday. Plus, he controlled, like, all of the Southerners forces, so yeah. So the U.S. accepted, and the border looked like this. But American settlers were still immigrating to Texas, so Spain finally just said, it's legal. American settlers flocked to Texas. Meanwhile, the Mexicans had finished their War of Independence, and the Mexicans recognized a new border and renewed the law. Soon, Moses Austin brought 300 families and bought this territory and settled in the area. Soon, Texans, Americans and Texans, had more people in Texas than Tejanos, Mexicans in Texas. The population was 3 to 1. Soon, the Mexican government banned immigration. No, all new Texans need to become real Mexicans, become Catholic, and learn Spanish. Most Texans ignored these laws. With more now illegal immigrants in the country, America actually offered to buy Texas two times, what both times Mexico refused. Meanwhile, Epracio Edwards declared an independent Republic of Fredonia with the Cherokee tribe. Most reasons for the rebellion were that the Mexican government hostile nature towards the new American immigrants. The Republic was quickly destroyed by Mexican and other Texan forces who want to be loyal to the government. After this, tech Mexico banned the practice of slavery. Now think of this. Most settlers of Texas were Americans, usually from the South, and bought t- brought tons of slaves to Texas. Texas began preparations for revolt until Mexico gave exceptions to Texas. Later in 1833, Lovis de Santa Ana became dictator of Mexico. Because Because of this, many states broke out in revolt. Meanwhile, Austin went to the capital to ask if Texas could become an independent state. Santa Ana, of course, said no. Austin would later be sent to prison because he was trying to send a letter back to Texas that militias would should be prepared for revolution. Though a Texas military was formed before Austin was freed and got there. Now let's go backward a second. Green DeWitt brought 400 families into the area to create the colony of Gonzales, but the area was already raided by natives. Since the Mexican government could not send troops to protect the colonists, Mexico gave them a six-pounder cannon. Now with the unrest in Texas, Mexico could not have a cannon in Texas. When Mexican troops attacked, Texans made a flag that said, come and take it. The Texans won with a, one casualty, a man who was run over by his horse. The Mexicans were not so lucky with two casualties. The next battle, the Battle of Goliath, captured the city of the Goliath from the Mexicans and stopped further offensive towards the port of Capano. The Battle of Conception was a huge offensive towards San Antonio de Bixar, which the Texas defended strong and willingly. The first Texan was killed during this battle. His name was Richard Andrews. During this military command changed from Austin to Houston. More fighting to push Mexican troops towards the border by capturing and destroying forts and attacking pack trains. The final push would be in December. Two months after the revolt began, the Mexicans had recaptured San Antonio de Bixar, and the Mexican forces began to siege the town. Six le- weeks later, after brutal house-to-house fighting comparable to Stalingrad, the Texans gained the town on December 11th.
But after this, things would get heated. In Texas, no one knew why they were fighting. Some said for an independent Texas away from Mexican tyranny and annexation by pro-slavery Americans, mostly. This was supported by many American settlers. On the other side looked to Mexico. While this was happening, other revolts across Mexico were happening, mostly protesting against Santa Ana's rule as dictators. Most Tejanos in Texas, plus the slaves of American settlers, supported this and hoped to destroy Santa Ana's rule in government. By February of 1836, Mexico had begun the Goliath Campaign, which, with the Texan army unorganized began attacking hard. This campaign was led by Santa Ana himself. This period would be remembered as a runaway scrape. The first battle was at San Pantario. The town was quickly captured against the unorganized force. The Texan army was continually on the run with the small battle until Mexican troops reached San Antonio de Bixar, where Texan forces were surrounded in a mission known as the Alamo. Now, the Alamo deserves its own video, but this video is probably my longest, so let's get to the important stuff. Meanwhile, when the siege began, another force led by Antonio Gennata was heading towards Goliath. The Alamo slowly was gaining men such as Davy Crockett, the militiaman slash tracker turned congressman turned soldier in the Alamo. He brought about 15 men. Meanwhile, in Washington on the Brazos, Texas declared their own country, called the Republic of Texas, declared on March 2nd. Meanwhile, four days later, the Alamo fell with no survivors. Davy Crockett is often described as the last man to be shot. All of the soldiers would be burned. Later, Goliad had learned Texas had become independent and was ordered to leave. But they were captured and executed on the charge of treason. After this, Sam Houston, the new president, realized that his army is the last hope for independence. He was also very mad that the Mexicans had killed Davy Crockett, as he had fought with him under Jackson. And everyone else was mad. People signed up in droves, yelling, Remember the Alamo! Remember Goliad! Houston ordered retreat, saying, We shall choose the battleground. His troops kept moving until they came to the Buffalo Bayou. After a few skirmishes, the Texans surrounded the Mexicans during the night and burned the bridge against the river. By morning, the valiant 900 charged against 1,400 Mexican men. The Mexican army was unprepared, and before they could fight back, they were overrun. Santa Ana officially surrendered and recognized the Republic himself in exchange for life and a safe But after, when Santa Ana returned, the Mexican government officially did not recognize the government of Texas and did periodically border raids. Meanwhile, Texas was asking America for annexation. Jackson, who loved to expand the U.S. in land and slavery, loved it, but turned it down as it would upset the free and slave state battles. And Jackson loved the Union more than land and slavery combined. But they would recognize the Republic on March 3rd, 1837, a year and a day after declaring independence. Meanwhile, Texas had a long 10-year history of their Republic, having four presidents, he Burnett, Houston, Lamar, Houston again, and Ensign Jones. Texas would even recognize by Belgium, France, and the Netherlands, and of course, the U.S. Texas also claimed a lot of land out west, but had no real control. In 1845, Texas was annexed by the new president, James K. Polk, but this would lead to disputed territory, which would help spark the Mexican-American War. Hey, if you have not heard, I'm making a three-part series about Mexico becoming American. The next video dives into the Mexican-American War, which you can watch about a week or two after this.